Greetings, my name is Kotal, and this is the first of a series of videos concerning the road to war for the U.S. Civil War. This video will attempt to answer the hypothetical question of whether, if Lincoln faced a single unifying opponent, he could have been defeated in the 1860 election. As the title implies, it is highly unlikely, but there are some potential paths that would give this imaginary opponent a chance. The 1860 election saw four major candidates that ran for the presidency. Abraham Lincoln, with the Republican Party, was the historical winner. The Democratic Party split, offering two candidates, one oriented with the northern states and one with the southern. The northern candidate was Stephen Douglas, while the southern candidate was John Breckinridge. The final candidate was from the newly established Constitutional Unionist Party, with John Bell heading up the ticket. Lincoln won the election with 180 electoral votes of the required 152, but with just under 40% of the popular vote. Every state which Lincoln won was a free state. Douglas came closest to Lincoln in the popular vote with just under 30%, but he garnered a mere 12 electoral votes with a victory in the border state of Missouri and picking up three electoral votes from New Jersey 7 in a convoluted fusion system. The other four electoral votes for New Jersey went to Lincoln. Next came Breckinridge with just over 18% of the popular vote. He earned a total of 72 electoral votes, all from slave holding states, and all soon to join the Confederacy in the months to follow, although he did also carry Delaware and Maryland, border states with slavery, but which would remain in the Union after hostilities broke out. Finally, John Bell earned approximately 12.5% of the popular vote, with a total of 39 electoral votes. His victory came from border states, Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. As the Unionists consisted of many disaffected Whigs, winning the former Whig strongholds of Kentucky and Tennessee is not surprising. Now the question comes to the hypothetical scenario, whether if Lincoln had faced a single unified opponent, he could have lost the election. This is not pure fantasy, and there were serious proposals as late as August 1860 to offer up a new candidate or rally around the Unionists to prevent a Lincoln victory, and in the minds of the proponents, prevent a secession crisis. Jefferson Davis, the eventual president of the Confederacy, intimated that the New York governor Horatio Seymour was a possible candidate that could fit this role. However, these efforts fell apart. First, Lincoln was already considered a more conciliatory candidate, as he had defeated the more radical William Seward for the Republican nomination and stood a better chance of attracting moderates. Second, Douglas intimated that if he had dropped out, his Northern Democratic support would simply move to Lincoln, as opposed to backing this new theoretical candidate. Finally, Bell, through an intermediary, rejected the plan and posited that he had the best chance of winning, and that trying to find a new unifying candidate was unlikely at that point in the election. In addition, the Unionists had specifically avoided major questions facing the nation in their party platform, placing all their emphasis on preserving the Constitution and the Union. For example, although Bell had opposed some tariffs in the course of his career, the Republicans had generally adopted the protectionist stance previously championed by the Whigs in the form of the Morrell Tariff, which had passed the House but languished in the Democrat-controlled Senate. It is likely that under a unified ticket, some support may also bleed from the Unionists to Lincoln over issues like tariffs. For the purposes of this hypothetical, let us assume that all of these issues could be overcome, that there would be no defections from Douglas or Bell to Lincoln, in other words, that all the votes for a candidate other than Lincoln voted for this unity ticket instead. In that case, starting out all electoral votes for the other three candidates equals to 123, still short by 29. However, two states do flip when we add all the votes together. The first is California with its four electoral votes. Lincoln only won the state by 734 over Douglas. On the other hand, with this unity ticket, Lincoln would have lost by over 42,000 votes, or 35%. That places the electoral count at 127, still short by 25. The other West Coast state, Oregon, with its three electoral votes, would similarly flip in this scenario. In this case, it would be Breckinridge that was closest to defeating Lincoln, only being edged out by 270 votes. However, with the unity ticket, Lincoln would have lost by just over 4,000 votes, or 27%. That places the electoral count at 130, short by 22. 
At this point, there are no further potential changes by combining the votes that would flip any further states. So even combined, with no defections, Lincoln would still have won. On the other hand, this unique candidate did have two viable paths to the necessary 152 electoral votes to secure a victory. The first path is through Ohio. Lincoln won the state with 221,809 total votes, with Douglas the closest competitor with 187,421 votes. The deficit was 34,388, or just under 8%, a comfortable margin of victory for Lincoln. However, if we add in Breckenridge and Bells to Douglas for a unity total, it equals 210,917 total votes. In this case, Lincoln still wins, but only by a slim margin of 10,892 votes, or a 2.5% margin. If 5,447 Lincoln voters switched to the unity candidate, that candidate would carry Ohio and its massive 23 electoral hall. This single state would bring the unity candidate to the 153 electoral votes needed to secure victory, and Lincoln would have lost the election. The second scenario is slightly more complicated, as it requires the unity candidate to win two states, Illinois and Indiana, combined at 24 electoral votes. Starting with Illinois, with 11, Lincoln won the state with 172,171 votes, with the closest competitor being Douglas with 160,215 votes, meaning a deficit of 11,956, or a 3.5% margin. When we add in the other candidates, it equals 167,460 votes, with a deficit of only 4,711, or 1.4% 1 margin. In this state, 2,357 voters switching away from Lincoln deliver the state to the unity candidate. The other state in this scenario, Indiana, accounts for 13 electoral votes. Lincoln did much better here, with 139,033 votes against Douglas, with only 115,509, winning by 23,524 votes, or 8.55% margin. However, when we add all three together for the unity ticket, it is 133,110, with a deficit of only 5,923, or 2.2% margin. Only 2,963 would be needed to switch to flip the state away from Lincoln. For both states, the minimum needed to switch to earn the combined 24 electoral votes needed for victory is a scant 5,320 voters. For either the Ohio or the Indiana-Illinois option, it would be decided by less than 5,500 voters. However, there does not appear to be another viable path without a major shift in candidate selection, altering the vote totals as no other state that Lincoln won was within 5% margin of the combined unity ticket. Now again, these two scenarios assume a unity ticket that did not bleed any voters to a Lincoln candidacy, something that seems unlikely given the political dynamics and even the observations from some of the candidates themselves. Even then it falls short. On the other hand, less than 6,000 voters for either scenario, even in 1860, is far closer than one might otherwise expect. So to answer the question I posed at the top, could a unity candidate defeat Lincoln? The answer seems likely no. But there are at least two viable paths based on the actual results and making some very generous assumptions that could see a defeat for Lincoln. But what do you guys think? Could a unity candidate have won and Lincoln have lost? What impact could that have had on the Civil War? What did you think of my analysis? What did I miss? And what did I get wrong? Please, though, if you do have corrections, let me know the source that you are getting that from if there are factual inconsistencies in my analysis. I have left my sources in the description timestamp to assist with footnotes. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing.